Welcome to day 350 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. Remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in Cloud Feed. So Brian, yesterday we made a post on our profile on DSO and I thought maybe you'd like to talk about it. Yeah, so I, 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 I know it might've came off as kind of negative uh, in a way towards DSO. I, I don't mean for it to be a negative post at all. I, I hope that it can be constructive criticism for everybody, not just the, the core team who I think is working really hard on what they're working on, but I think just the community in general. And, and I think that there's a, this whole new excitement about Dow Dow, and we're excited as well. In fact, we bought a couple silver uh, NFTs, and and I think uh, I think a couple bronze ones as well. Um, I'm excited. I think the community is excited, but I think that we have to be careful. And, and I, I say this not because I don't think Dow Dow is going to be be a success. I think Dow Dow has the potential to be a killer app on DSO and bring a lot of people on board. But at the same time, I'm also a bit worried about how people may use Dow Dow, people that might not have our best interests at hand. I think there's going to be a lot of scammers who come on board and try to take advantage of Dow Dow. It's such a new, new concept. Uh, of course, there's Dow's out there, but the general pop populace of the world, they aren't too familiar with what a Dow is. So when you, you had these investments, investment vehicles almost coming here, uh, creating this Dow, raising capital, uh, providing voting rights, returning capital with promises, based on promises. I think there's gonna be, have to be a, a lot of mechanisms in place to make sure that people don't fall for scams. I think a lot of people had left DSO in the first few months because of rug pulls related to the creator coin. And I think that this could have the potential to cause the same sort of, I guess, negativity that we saw some of the scams, creator coin scams caused. Um, that's not to say that this isn't gonna be a success. I think it has the potential to be a success, but I think we just need to have precautions in place. And this comes from us. Of course, if you're familiar with our story six years ago, uh, we were actually raided by Department of Homeland Security because we were selling ads to companies that were investments, but they weren't regulated investments. And pretty much they thought we were involved, we weren't. But it just kind of opened our eyes and, and kind of made us realize, hey, you got to be careful, got to take things slow, you got to kind of realize what you're dealing with. And I'm sure this is going to be in other countries outside of the United States, I'm sure there's, there's less regulation and less to worry about. But in the United States, I think we have to just take it slow, be careful. Um, I hope that we can find uh, some ways to make some of the features in these DAOs trustless, which I, I think is really important. I think we also need to maybe, maybe have some sort of mechanism or some sort of maybe secondary sites that, that kind of rank these, the trustworthiness or the verification of some of the people creating these DAOs. Uh, maybe you can verify the DAOs in different ways, provide different different levels of verification, something that can at least add a little bit more trust to some of well, these things. I, I wonder if verifications by associations will help cover that. Because you know every DAO is going to be an account on DSO. So if there's verification by association, maybe there will be people who, you know, create this service where they can kind of verify some of the things that the DAO is doing. But we'll wait and see. And I, I think it's also important to note, you know, it's not just scams, but it's people that create a DAO and don't really know what they're doing and it ends up failing because they weren't really prepared and they didn't take the appropriate steps and then everybody loses their money, loses their investment into that DAO. So, you and know, then they, then they're on the hook possibly, possibly legally yeah. uh, when they didn't mean to cause any harm. They just didn't realize the ins and outs of running a DAO or the ins and outs of running an investment uh, of any sort. Yeah. I, I mean, I think DAO DAO has so much potential though. It's just like everybody has to be careful, I think. Yeah, we're going to get a little bit more into that a little bit later in the show. Um, the second part of my post, I, I was just pointing out that I think there's a lot of people that are, are kind of feeling frustrated on these. So people that have been here for six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, even 12 months who have been posting, who have been 
been doing a lot of hard work. I've been trying to engage with people who might feel a little bit confused, maybe a little bit forgotten about. Um, I don't really, I don't want to say I blame the core team for this. I know they have their hands full, but I, I think that, I think that the OGs, those, those people that have been around for a while and have been really making themselves a presence and really helping you push this technology forward, I think they should be rewarded in some way. And I know we've talked about all different ways that could happen. And I'm not saying this, I don't want any reward uh, pass over us. We're not saying this because we're selfishly trying to get anything. Um, I'm saying it more because the people I've talked to, some of the people that have been here for 10 or 11 months uh, are saying, hey, like, I feel like they're just jumping to all these other, in all these other directions and they're kind of forgetting the core vision and the people that helped make this, this the early DSO what it was, the bit cloud what it was, that what we saw in March and April of last year. It, so it's, it's hard. Like, it's hard though. It like, is. It you know, is. You, you can't you can't reward people in in one sense because how do you go about doing it? What about people who were really active but they you know stepped away for a month or stepped away for a week or stepped away for two months? And they don't get a reward. Like it's, I just think it's way too complicated to reward people because there's going to be somebody who's pissed off that they didn't get as much as person B didn't get as much as person A. I think that just opens up a whole new can of worms. So it has to be some, you know, like I don't know if like airdrops are really the solution to something like that. Yeah. And, and, I know I kind of go against what I usually preach. I usually say, like, like, don't criticize something. Don't attack something unless you have a solution. I don't really have a solution. I don't know what the solution is. But the reason I am being a little bit critical here is that I think there are people out there that could have the solution. They, they might know. I think there's a lot of brilliant people on DSO who maybe they can provide some insight. Maybe they can talk to core and give some suggestions on, on how how, the, how they can make the original people on DSO who are still around feel like they are not forgotten, how maybe maybe feel like they are actually an integral part of the future of DSO. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, think that, I think there's a lot to talk about. I, I don't think that the core team has really done anything wrong. I, I, I appreciate that they are trying to do this Dow Dow thing. Uh, I think it's it might be the right decision. It might not be. I I think that, as I said, we invested into it, so that says something. But uh, I think it's just important they don't forget the roots of everything. Does DSO Foundation become a DAO? That's the question. If that happens, then you know the community is going to actually decide on everything that DSO Foundation does. So you know maybe we're just a few steps away from that. Maybe maybe DAO DAO is going to actually kind of help that in that the DSO Foundation can become a DAO and the community actually controls, you know, they control the whatever $200 million that the foundation has and decides on what to do with that money in order to help build DSO out. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and I know they've mentioned the Octane Fund becoming a DAO, uh, that DSO Foundation could become a DAO. I think that would be something, a step in the right direction. DAO Combinator, it's basically an investment vehicle and invest, it's basically a, of Y Combinator DAO. So, you know, I, I think a lot of things are going to change in the coming months. Yeah. And, and I think that like creator coins, they're basically non-existent right now. And like nobody is really, I'm not going to say nobody, but compared to before, compared to four or five months ago, the creator coin uh, mechanisms that we've seen, the, the market has dried up. And I think there's several reasons for that. I think rug pulls were one of them. I think that maybe the bonding curve is too steep. Uh, it rewards the super early investors. And then you have everybody pulling out and there's bags to be, be held. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the right solution is. I don't know how you can fix the creator coin without screwing everything up because people bought in at a certain, certain, uh, certain like graph chart if you change the chart of the bonding curve, I think it's gonna screw things up. So I don't know. I think that everything is a work in progress, but there's a lot of really smart people on core as well as in the community. And I think that eventually things will work out and it will be for the best and we'll come back to this time and say, hey, day 350, remember when we talked about this? Well, look, it got resolved. Yeah, hopefully that's the way it goes. 
Uh, so on to some news, bithunt.com, uh, probably everybody, almost everybody on DSO has heard of bithunt. It's basically a list of uh, different projects that are built on DSO blockchain. They have rebranded. They're no longer bithunt. They are now DSO list. And the website is now DSO list.cc. And of course, bithunt, now DSO list, was created by Jack Lee, J C K L Y, uh, Jack on DSO. And uh, Matt Etter, they're the creators. And I, I love the rebranding. I love the new website. Definitely check it out, dsolist.cc. You can find a lot of cool projects built on top of DSO. Yeah, smart. I think it was a smart move to rebrand it. Um, bit, the word bit really isn't anything related to DSO anymore. So good job, uh, good decision, I think. And Paul Burke has released BitCloud Plus version 0.12.0. .0. And some of the notable features in the new plus is it shows recently active. So now you can see on the right sidebar, I believe, you can now see those who you follow who have been recently active. So you can kind of like take part in conversations with people who are actually active on the platform, which I think is really cool. Because so many of my followers, so many of your followers probably are no longer on DSO. So it's kind of hard to like sift through them all, but now you can see your followers who are recently active, which I think is a really cool feature. Uh, there's also a block tab. So if you're in your profile, you can see your followers, your following, and also who you have blocked. And with one click, just clicking the X, you can unblock somebody. But you can also see anybody else's block list, which I think is really cool. You can kind of find out, okay, this person is blocking this, this person. I probably should be blocking them too because it's probably a spammer or a scammer. So I, I think that could be really handy, especially as DSO grows. Uh, there's also Omnibox updates. So if you type DSO into the uh, address bar on your browser and then press tab, you can enter a username, like you could enter Krasenstein or a public key, you could enter anybody's public key to quickly open that profile on, on BitCloud. So that's another cool feature. And finally, there's an explore NFTs menu. And you can now click on anybody's explore NFTs for anybody's profile on their profile page. And it's going to direct you to their NFTZ page. I really appreciate that, Paul. It's, a, it's great. More people are going to come to your NFTZ because of it. So thanks again, Paul Burke, for all the great updates. I know Brian and I use BitCloud Plus. I know a lot of people use it. And I'm glad to see Paul Burke building out new features as time goes on. Yeah, yeah, plus plus is great. It's it's a time saver for sure. If you're a DSO power user, uh, definitely download it because it's going to save you a lot of time uh, and it's getting better every every few weeks. So great job, Paul. And DSO.js is coming. I assume that's DSO JavaScript. I'm not very techy, but I can tell you what I know. Uh, Matt Etcher noted that DSO.js has been published on GitHub. And that's thanks in a large part to Paul Burke again. Uh, Paul, Paul Burke helped develop some of this stuff. It provides new identity service support, particularly for the endpoints login, approve, uh, for the endpoints that are login, these are the endpoints, login, approve, derive, get shared secrets, get free DSO and verify phone number. And Natter, he says that the new DSO.js is going to make it so that developers no longer need to use weird iframe. Uh, you and probably have noticed some of the iframe stuff that's been going on. Uh, so you don't need to use a weird iframe with post messaging. Uh, so it's, you know, I, I think it's a great thing. Um, all you have to do now is call DSO.long or DSO.submit post. Again, I'm not really that techie, so some of this stuff confuses me. Um, Nader also said, quote unquote, I think this is going to be a big breakthrough for devs building apps. It takes a hundred lines of complicated iframe connector code and turns it into just one abstracted function call. So, you know, this is good. Uh, I think developers are going to like it. I think it's going to make it easier for apps to be developed, maybe some more, you know, login and onboarding stuff that can go on. So it's good news. Yeah, and what we want, we want developers coming on board and what better way to attract developers is than to make things simpler and more easy to understand. So 
Way to go, Paul Burke, again. Uh, you're making everybody's lives simpler, whether it's developers or just everyday DSO users. So what's the latest with Dow Dow? Yeah, so obviously I mentioned them earlier. Um, we are excited about what's happening with Dow Dow. Yesterday, there was another gold NFT sold. Um, it was bought by the account Save the Chizards. Ch no, Charizards. Char Char Charizards, sorry, I'm not a Ryan, It's Pokemon, it's Charizards. Charizard. I, I'm not a Pokemon collector or anything, so maybe when my son, my son is, starts my son getting into them, I'll know, know more. Um, but anyway, there's 7,400 members now on the Discord. I don't know if how many of these are bots because it's spiking quite, quite rapidly. Maybe a good portion of them are legit. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. There is a whole lot of activity, and there's been a whole lot of NFT purchases. In fact, all 1,000 of the bronze NFT tickets have sold out and they were they were priced at $100 at the time I believe so that is that's pretty remarkable a thousand of those well, so sold. they're priced at 2.5 DSO we always we've been referring it to it in US dollar but 2.5 DSO DSO is only worth 20 which is like 75 right now, right now. yeah um when it when it launched DSO was at $40 so it was it was based on that but Things are definitely picking up with Dow Dow, and there's about 20 days left before it officially launches and those NFTs stop selling. It's going to be interesting to see what happens now that these bronze NFTs are sold out, because that was like an easier price point for the bulk of people to buy, buy into. So now the next level is the silver, which cost at today's piece of price around $750. So are, are they going to add more bronze tickets? I don't know. Um, are they just going to hope that that people jump up to the thousand dollar level? I don't know. I think it kind of prices it out for a lot of people, um, but we'll see. And and like like I said, we have a few bronze ticket or at least a couple. I think bronze tickets and two silver tickets. We're thinking about buying more silver tickets. So that's that says a lot about how we think Dow Dow is going to go. Um, I know we were critical earlier. But I think the criticism's more about the safety mechanisms than us not wanting to see people get ripped off or even just gain the attention of regulatory bodies in the US, which could really put a damper on things. So we think that it's a great idea. We think that it's sort of a grayish area in that, in that there really aren't regulations or rules around DAOs quite yet. That's not a bad thing, but that is also a reason why you could see things explode. And if things explode and you're in a gray area, that's not always a positive if, if it gets the wrong people's attentions. So just be careful. Um, like I said, if you're a developer out there, I think that'll be great if there's some ways to kind of make this more trustless, maybe have, have some way to verify DAO creators. But uh, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna be excited to see how the next 20 days goes for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I could see them you know, the government saying, like the SEC saying, you need to do KYC on everybody who puts money onto the platform and takes or takes money off of it. So that's something that could come down the line and they could be forced to do. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, also, Tyne yesterday made a post suggesting the creation of a slim down diamond, essentially a, a Twitter core app, something, a, an app that, that's more like a Twitter on the blockchain. And he said, and by diamond, he means diamondapp.com. Yeah, yeah, diamond, diamond app. app, not the diamond you get. Yes, I think that's pretty uh, obvious, but maybe not to some people. Um, so his idea was number one, you remove the creator DAO coins, NFTs, DSO price, and the top sidebar. You clean up the left sidebar, speed up the page loading, provide profiles with posts and replies and media feeds. Um, you have a profile tab showing user likes. You have quick messaging pop-ups, profile pop-ups on hover, uh, post and search Google style homepage if not logged in, trending topics and explore page, recommended follows, lists and bookmarks. And you know, Part of me thinks that, you know, we do need like this slimmed down version, just a basic Twitter like Twitter like app that's on the blockchain that can attract just normal people who just want to, you know, be on social media, but also not be at the whim of a large corporation. So 
I don't know what, what's everybody else's thoughts on, you know, do we need a Twitter, a slimmed down version of diamond app? It's, it's a good question. I, I, I just don't know. Like, like I, I kind of feel like, like certain aspects you need because that's what's setting it aside from Twitter. Like why are people going to yeah. join a new social, new Twitter like app with one, one hundred thousandth the number of users if it's just a Twitter clone. Um, I think we are actually seeing this kind of with, with Truth Social, which is the, uh, the social app that is being launched by former President Donald Trump. It's, it's actually up and running. It's been up and running for, for several weeks now, uh, pretty much open to anybody who wants to sign up, I believe now. But it's, the activity levels are, are really low. And I think that's because it's just like Twitter. It's based almost entirely on Twitter except it doesn't have some of the features Twitter has. So it's like a slimmed down version of Twitter. So why are people going to come here if they can just go on Twitter and do the same thing? Yeah, and it, it, it's a slimmed down version of Twitter, but it also is like a segmented area. Like people, people on Truth Social are mainly conservatives that have all the same viewpoints. In the United States. In the United States. So people on Twitter like Twitter has become so big because I think people did love debating different topics. They love, you know, seeing the other side and, you know, trash talking the other side, unfortunately, and, you know, trolling the other side. Whereas on Truth Social, it's just all these people with the same ideas, kind of just like saying the exact same things to each other. So, you know, I think it would have been better if they did something like that on, on the blockchain, like if Truth Social was to launch on DSO. But then again, you don't, you lose control. Like, you you know, you can't really ban, you can ban people from truth social, but there's posts are still going to be out there in the public for other websites. So I don't think that's the direction they're trying to go with truth social. I don't know. Anyhow, what were yesterday's top hashtags? Yeah. Uh, yesterday, number one was DSO, number two, NFT, three art, four, Dow Dow, and five photography. So all of those have been up there before. Um, Dow Dow's been up there for a couple of days now in a row, but uh, thanks to Open Prosper. Yeah. And, and what, then what are, uh, yeah, let's ahead, get Brian. to the top accounts from Open Prosper over the last 24 hours, the top earners. So yesterday, last, or the last 24 hours, $120,916 in total was earned. 117,575 of that was from Dow to Dow's NFT sales, of course. So only about $3,400 was outside of Dow to Dow. Uh, 916 creators earned at least some DSO. Now, yesterday, that number was, I think it was 3,400 or 3,800. So it was that, four yeah. times as many. But remember, we said something must be up. Why did all these creators earn money? So Salil Sethi behind Open Prosper, he actually replied back to us and he said that it was actually bot activity. Somebody was, an, a, an account was buying a very small amount of all of these people's creator coins, thousands of creator coins. And basically, since they have a founder award attached to them, they earned a small percentage and thus they earned some DSO. So that kind of clarifies that. It wasn't some surge of traffic like we had hoped. Um, the, the, uh, there are 25 creators yesterday who earned at least one DSO. That's up. That's pretty good. Um, but here's the top 10, Dow Dow, and then Reed, Le Big Mac, Clout Punk, Seals, Darmesh, Natter, NFT Place, Tiger Boy, and Story. Congratulations to everybody who earned on DSO yesterday. Great and job. for today's community event, there's one that I'm aware of. Unfortunately, Miss Katie Ann didn't get me the list in time for the show this morning. Maybe she's up partying last night. Maybe she's working. I know she works a ton. Uh, but the event today is DSO Week in Review at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Brian usually gives the news updates for that, all the news that happened in the past week. It's on Clubhouse, again, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time with DSO Chats, Michelle Lord, Miss Katie Ann, who else? Rhubarb, uh, French Connector, Wildography, Conchi, GDS, Clout Women Unite, and many others. Uh, it's a great crowd, very informative room. You learn, you're going to learn a lot about Dow Dow this week because there's so much news about Dow Dow. You learn about some other things that took place on DSO. So definitely check that out. And I think that's all we have for today, day 350 of our DSO journey.